Okay, think and analyze tier 101 lecture number 4. So, let us take a look at one of the examples in orthographic views, but before that some fun. Are you available on Fridays or Saturdays for your AutoCAD workshop? If you are wonderful, so we will arrange for the workshops on one of the two days or rather both days. So, you are 12 batches. Uh, we will divide those batches into 6 and 6. So, 6 can go on Fridays and 6 can go on Saturdays and then the next week we will have the AutoCAD lab. You know Fridays, Monday we have bunch of lectures, Tuesday bunch of lectures, Wednesday, Thursday bunch of lectures, come Friday and you are fried right Friday. Anyways do not worry about that does not matter sense and nonsense some more fun. Ha, did you have your lunch yet it is 2 o'clock. Okay, so, the reason why I have posed this picture up is to make a point we tend to spoon feed you yeah. Your academic appetite gets satiated over time, gets satisfied over time, and that's the reason why. That's one of the reasons why you tend to lose interest in academics in some time, maybe one semester, two semester, three or four semesters, which is bad news. Bad north, east, west, south. Not good. The point that I'm making is you should never stop asking questions, no matter what academics or otherwise keep your curiosity alive and feed me with it I am hungry for your curiosity. Do not take me for granted question me challenge me. I am bound to make a lot of mistakes I keep making a lot of mistakes you know so always question me challenge me I will be very happy to answer your questions then and there if not then definitely in the next lecture. Okay, so this is pertaining to the question that I had posed uh, in the previous lecture. So, given the three orthographic views, is it possible for us to uniquely represent a solid, or vice versa? Can a solid, can any solid, be uniquely represented by three orthographic views? So, this is a counter example. So, let's say you have a block or a cube. You have a smaller cube on the back side, on the back face you have again a smaller cube on the front face, cube on the side, cube on that side, cube on top, cube on bottom okay. and then you have a void in there. So, this is pretty much like you know you have this cube placed dot at the center of the space and all such cubes placed on the respective centers of the respective faces. Now, for this solid is it possible for you to represent this uniquely using orthographic views let us see. Hinge line separating the front view from the top view and another vertical hinge line separating the front view from the right side view. Now, if you sketch the views out you will probably be getting something like this front view, top view and the right hand side view exactly the same story exactly the same result. Okay. Now, watch out for the conventions that I use. I use dash dot dot dash dot dot to represent the hinge lines. So, this object is symmetric both along the vertical as well as along the horizontal. Okay. So, I am using dash dot dash dot this convention to represent the line of symmetry. Usually, it is also used to represent the center line. So, since these two are also symmetric about the horizontal and the vertical I am going to be using those lines and of course, where are my projection lines they have to be there. So, the final lines are thick solid lines 
whereas the construction lines are gray lines just for reference it's always a nice idea to have projection lines because otherwise things become very difficult to comprehend orthographic views uniquely represent a solid almost always but not every time for instance in this case it is not possible for you to represent the internal void here okay so be careful about that but almost always these views they work okay orthographic projections this is the fourth lecture second week let's take an example so we have to draw the uh, orthographic views of the solid dimensions of which are given okay let's work it out one by one so this could be a little boring but uh, if you follow the construction you know step by step things might be enlightening for you the first step preparing your sheet write your name write your subject what you're working on okay give all the details in the box over here and this is the convention we use for the third angle orthographic view so if you have a cone the cone from this side is going to look like two concentric circles and of course this would look like a trapezium mention the sign over here or depict the sign over there and actually although this is at the center or on this at the center of the sheet it actually is on the bottom right corner of your sheet right there okay so once you have prepared your sheet you're ready once again mention the subject more importantly mention the scale so we're using the scale 1 is to 2 okay now we are looking at the object along this direction so this would be the front view of the object that would be the top view and the right hand side view would be from that side okay draw the hinge line but before that just estimate based on the dimensions as to how your bounding boxes for the front view the top view and the right hand side view are going to be placed okay once you make those preliminary measurements start with the hinge lines first so this is the hinge line that separates the front view from the top view make the bounding box now this is about 114 millimeters this is about 32 here and this is about 32 over there 114 plus 32 plus 32 114 plus 64 which would be something some number 178 I believe that would be the length of this bounding box and the height would be about this dimension 45 plus 18 okay so since I am using the scale 1 is to 2 178 over 2 would be 89 I am going to mention there and that is going to be 31.5 okay 45 plus 18 divided by 2 so the scale 1 is to 2 would mean that 1 would actually represent 2 scale and this would represent that I am actually you know scaling this object down by half 1 is to 2 okay all right so this is the front view so I am going to mention that over here top view mention that over there about the hinge line draw the projection lines the length remains the same okay this dimension over here would be about 32 64 divided by 2 okay and I will finish this bounding box and I will draw the vertical hinge line here I will be sketching my or rather drawing not sketching drawing my right hand side view extend the projection lines okay and I will draw the bounding box over here so this length is the same as this length 32 this is about 31.5 it's pretty much like a square 
is a profile view. So, the side view is also called the profile view. Okay. So, my profile view for instance. Okay, I should have also extended the lines from here, from here, and I would have drawn the 45 degree line over here. I should have done that. Be very careful. I am bound to make a lot of mistakes. Okay, so let's start with the final version of the drawing. I'll see this edge from here to here. I'll see this vertical edge. I'll see the vertical edge over here. Okay, although this is like a semicircle, I'll see the corner of that or the extreme of that. Okay, I'll see this horizontal edge from both sides, and then I'm going to draw a projector from this point over here up to the top, and on this projector would lie this edge. Likewise, on this vertical projector would lie this edge. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to be working on the right hand side view alongside. All right. So this is the edge that I draw here, the second edge that I draw here. Okay. Then I would draw this edge. So this is about 64, 38. So 64 minus 38 is whatever dimension divided by 2. So this dimension is given 13, 13 divided by 2 from both sides. I would draw this projector from here to here. Okay, likewise, the other vertical projector. This dimension is 18, so I'll mark it 9. Note that I'm working with one two scale. That dimension is 13 over 2, 6.5. This one is again 6.5. Okay. Um, this is 13 from bottom from here, so it's about 6.5 from there. I'll draw this vertical edge down and this vertical edge down. Okay, and I'll also see this edge right there. Am I done? Not quite. Would I be seeing this edge? Yeah, because this would actually correspond to this edge right there. Am I done? Again, not quite. How about these circular holes or cylindrical holes? I'll have to depict that as well. Now, if I look at this object from this side, are these holes visible? No, but they have to be shown somehow. So, I'm going to show that using hidden lines or dashed lines. Okay. Nevertheless, I'll work on them a little later. Let me project this guy here onto the right side view. I will start working with the top view. So, this is this edge that I have drawn there, this edge that I have drawn in my top view, this edge here very easy. Okay, I draw the center portion, mark this as 19 divided by 2, which is 9.5 I guess, draw this edge and dimension. So, always a nice idea to dimension while you are drawing different features of the objects in three different views. This is 9.5, 19 divided by 2 and then I will depict this edge and this edge and then I will complete this loop. So, this part is very nicely visible in the top view. What else? Well, this is this edge and then there is this edge right. Okay, so, I already know what this dimension is. So, from here I can measure what this extent is alright. So, these edges would also show up on the right side of the top view and then I would mark the center okay I would mark the center line and then I will draw this semicircle on the left as well as on the right okay 
well ideally before I did that I should have marked the vertical center line as well as the horizontal center line on both sides to you know depict the center of the semicircle as well as the circle nevertheless maybe I am not that patient enough. So, I do that now and with these as centers I draw a circle of diameter phi 22 on both sides. Okay, so, this dimension is 114 divided by 2 57 that dimension is 64 divided by 2 which is 32. Now, this is of radius 32. So, I am going to be using a leader. Now, the way I depict this leader is as if I have an arrow, this line pointing towards the center of the semicircle at 45 degrees or 30 degrees or 60 degrees, if you have many such circular features here. So, this one is at 45 degrees, and then I will draw horizontal, and then I will depict this is R16 scale 1 is to 2 okay. and that one again at 45 degrees on the other side of diameter 11 scale 1 is to 2. So, since there are two circles, so it is like 2 times phi that represents the diameter times 11. Okay. Am I done with the top view? not quite or perhaps I do not know you tell me. Now, I should have dimensioned this before, but I am dimensioning it now. So, this is about 13 divided by 2 which is 6.5. Okay, so, as I said before there would be two circular features here also getting represented in the front view. So, I chose to first depict those circles in the top view and then project the corresponding feature onto the front view. So, I project the center line first on both sides and then I project the end points of the diameter of the circle on both sides again. So, since the circle is hidden is going to be shown using hidden lines on both sides. So, this is how nicely these projectors they work you do not have to measure things every time. So, the projectors they do that for you indirectly or implicitly. So, things become a lot more efficient. So, it is always a nice idea to keep drawing projectors alongside when you are working with the main drawing. Okay, now, to the right side view of the profile view I am now extending these projector lines. 45 degree line over here. So, from this side I am going to be seeing this edge which is pretty much this edge ok. I will be seeing the edge corresponding to this surface the verticals you know the extent extreme right and left and I am going to be now seeing this edge right there and this edge right there and then I am going to be seeing this edge right there. Now, like I did for the circles over here I will do the same thing for the profile view. First I will project the center line draw the center line the profile view and then project the extremes of the circle onto the right side and then again in the right side view or the profile view the circle or the circular features are going to be hidden. I am going to be showing those features using headlines. Now, would these two lines cover only this circle or both circles? Question right, they will be covering both circles. Okay. What else? Now, this slope is something which would be explicitly visible only in the profile view, not in the front view nor in the top view. So, you would know the extreme point for this feature here this this location 
you know which is at this height and then you would also need the extreme point for the slope right there okay right here okay so this slope is going to be represented by a line a slant line in the profile view so starting from here ending up till here there you go anything else that i may be missing well let's see as i said are we missing this line or not this line essentially corresponds to this line in the top view are we missing anything else perhaps not you know but this example um, I deliberately made three mistakes I will talk about that something that uh, is quite common amongst you so you would do that mistake one I have depicted scaled dimensions but not true dimensions now what is going to happen by convention I should be depicting true dimensions okay the reason is because I am mentioning the scale over here 1 is to 2 so of course any person who is interpreting these drawings he or she would know that the drawings themselves are scaled by half but he or she would actually see the true dimensions if I depict them number one number 2 look at these decimal points 9.5 6.5 6.5 6.5 31.5 it's not a good idea to show numbers by means of decimals in your drawing always a good idea to show your drawings by means of whole numbers mistake one that i made you should not make those mistake or that mistake even if you're scaling your drawing you should be depicting two dimensions mistake number two look at the way I have dimensioned the drawing the larger dimensions they happen to appear to be closer to the object whereas the smaller dimensions they happen to appear to be away from the object again not a good idea should be the other way around smaller dimensions they should be represented closer to the object and larger dimensions they should be represented away from the object mistake number three dimensions have been repeated so try to depict the information as concisely as tersely as possible do not repeat dimensions okay now if I do not make these mistakes Oh, by the way, I already told you about the leader. So, this would be an arrow which is at 45 degrees. Well, just emanating from the center, okay, at 45 degrees to the horizontal, and then there would be a horizontal line, and above that horizontal line, you're going to be mentioning the dimension. It's called a leader. Likewise, we have a leader here as well. I already mentioned that before. Okay, so this scheme of dimensioning is called the aligned dimensioning. Look at the horizontal dimensions. We have an arrow with arrow heads on the right and on the left, and the dimensions happen to appear to be above the dimensioning arrow. For the vertical ones, imagine that you have rotated this thing 90 degrees clockwise, something like this. Okay. So, not only would the arrow get rotated, also the number would get rotated. So, the arrow, the vertical arrow, would look like that, arrow heads on both sides, and the number is going to be aligned with the arrow. So, if you imagine that this is rotated by 90 degrees anti clockwise the number will be appearing on the left 
of the dimensioning arrow aligned dimension okay that is an example as I had mentioned the number above the arrow for the horizontal dimensions okay and for the vertical dimensions the number to the left of the arrow okay but aligned with the dimensioning arrow so you would not want to write 32 as this on the right side or even 32 as you know being aligned to the horizontal line that would not be correct okay so if i correct those mistakes if i bring in smaller dimensions inside the larger dimensions outside okay but before that in case of horizontal dimensioning dimension or the number below the arrow is incorrect in case of vertical dimensioning dimension on the right hand side of the arrow is again incorrect mention that just to emphasize so if I go back for instance and if I try to correct these mistakes of mine mistake 1 mistake 2 and mistake 3 and if I depict all two dimensions number 1 number 2 if I depict smaller dimensions closer to the object large dimensions away from the object and if I make sure that the dimensions do not get repeated okay let me go forward my drawing would pretty much look like that okay smaller dimensions closer to the object larger dimensions away from the object all these dimensions in true scale Okay, the fact that I mentioned the scale over here gives the interpreter feeling that these drawings are actually scaled by half. Okay. All right. And of course, I have let go of repeated dimensions. Okay. All right. So first example in orthographic views. Uh, this is one of your lab problems. I will end this lecture here, keep thinking and analyzing until we meet next time.